A Sewing Lesson from Sew New York, Part 3 of the Darts, How to Press the Dart and Three Styles of Pattern Markings. Okay, now we're at the ironing board and now we can see the whole shape of the back piece. So we're looking at the inside and this is the left back bodice and down here this is the waistline and here's the beginning of the dart all the way to the vanishing point. So we want to press the dart. Now all darts, waistline darts, whether they be on the skirt or the bodice, they always get pressed towards the center. This is the center back. and Here's the neckline armhole. They always get pressed towards the center back. So we're going to press it towards the center back. Okay, let's press this dart. Now whenever you press the seam, you want the stitch line on the good side to be totally flat when it's pressed. You don't want to have it folded and the seam is on the is inside, so the seam is in there. Make that, don't make that mistake. You want it flat. Okay, let's turn the dart. Let's go to the back side. We'll start there. And we know that we want it to go towards the center back. This is the center back, so we're going to press it this way. I'm going to press the bottom half of the dart. I'm holding the fabric taut on the left side and the iron is heavy like a weight and I'm just going to press the bottom half very nicely towards towards the left side. Okay, and then I'm going to turn the dart this way and I want this vanishing point. You see the vanishing point, you create a crease just by, just by sewing that. There's already a crease that it can go all the way down we want to get rid of that crease and we're going to have the vanishing point. It's where, where the, the seam ends and it vanishes off the fabric. So you're going to press down to the vanishing point and then just press all of it towards your center back. And we'll take a look at the other side and you can always give a nice press on the other side as well. So let's turn it over and let's take a look at it. That looks very very nice. So it just sort of vanishes right at this point. The vanishing point is gone and I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a pressing. Steam is also a very good thing to use if you have any bubbling at the bottom or the top wherever the, if the, tar the vanishing points at the bottom like on a skirt or on the back side like this. Anyway, there's the finished press start. I think that looks um, pretty good. Okay. So here we are looking at three different uh, pattern pieces. They are all um, from the same pattern that we talked about in the darts part one. It was Vogue pattern V8815. Um, we have one back piece and two front pieces. And I'm going to demonstrate diff three different techniques for marking your pattern and I will be doing it for our darts. Uh, the three techniques can be used to mark your whole pattern if you mark um, everything. I'm just teaching you darts and I'm going to show you the techniques and you can use them throughout your patterns. We're going to we're going to do three. First one will be the um, tracing with the wax paper tracing. The second one will be uh, the chalk marking and the third one will be the simplified tailor's tack. So I haven't shown you the pattern yet, the actual picture of the pattern, Vogue um, V8815. It's a really cute top. If you're a new sewer, I highly suggest it. It's very simple and it's got that great peplum top which is um, so current today. One of the bodice pieces for a pattern and we're going to be concern our, concerning ourselves on the dart that's at the waistline. So we're going to mark this dart so that we can then put the dart together. And marking, you always mark your pattern pieces after you've pinned and then cut it, cut it out. Then you mark everything. Um, so I'm going to begin that now. Um, and this is the simplified tailor tack. I'm going to turn it this way because I'm right handed and I'm going to sew from the right to the left. So I'm going to put this into the line for the dart and I'm going to take a small stitch underneath and I'm going to leave a tail, oh, maybe about an inch, a little more. And now I'm going to make a, about a one inch stitch and I'm going to make it very loose. So 
there's going to actually be a little bit of a loop happening here. Like so. And we'll do another one about an inch away. The stitch underneath can be a little bit smaller, okay, in this fashion. All right, I'm going to finish this. Let me focus in on that a little bit better for you. Okay, so I've um, done the stitching. It's a very loose uh, tailor tack. It's a sim simplified version. And if I didn't mention it, when you do this, you're going to be sewing these stitches with a double thread. This is doubled, um, and there's no knot on the end. So now you're going to carefully pull your pattern off. We'd like to be able to save our pattern, which is one reason why I don't love this type of mark, because oftentimes it can get ripped. But if you're very careful, you'll be fine. I prefer the tailor tack with the loop because it's easier to pull it through. You don't have as much pulling to do. So I'm reaching behind it and just pulling off the paper carefully. Okay, I have separated the pattern from the fabric. Um, we haven't destroyed it too badly, as you can see, but it does get a little bit um, destroyed. Anyway, the pattern piece is free, and here are here are our marks. And now what we're going to do, we want to be able to have the marks on both sides of the fabric. So you're going to slowly separate your um, fabric and you're going to gently pull it until the loops lay flat on your fabric. So like so, like that. And then with your snips, we're going to come in here and we're going to cut this and therefore now you have marks on either side. So some people prefer this because it's probably a little bit quicker and now just pull the other side equally and cutting your marks. Great, now you have marks for each side of your dart. And then again, you would follow the instructions as I had showed you for pinning the dart in part one. Basically your dart is, that's the seam right there, they have to meet. And you're always putting your good side of your fabric together and sewing on the wrong side. So that would be your dart. This method of marking your pattern is the tracing method. And you'll need a few tools. Um, you'll need to have a ruler. You need to have your tracing paper and big enough so you can fold it in half because we're going to be able we need to be able to use both sides. Okay, so a piece of folded tracing paper for marking for it's a pattern, it's for your pattern. It has a wax on it. Um, and you can get it um, in sewing related businesses. You're going to also need some tracing wheels, and there's two types. Can you see these? One has the very sharp edges. And one is just, it's not so sharp, all right? You want to use the type that's not very sharp. This is more for pattern making, um, but you don't want to use this for tracing. Um, we're just going to go with the smaller wheel. So now I have the tracing paper in between my top layer and bottom layer of my fabric. The paper is folded in half. You have to take out your pins to get the paper in there. Um, the way that I cut out my pattern, I keep the good side of the fabric facing out and I keep the wrong side of the fabric together. So when I do these lines, these lines are going to appear, these marks will appear on the wrong side of my fabric. If you do it the other way, if you cut your pattern with your good sides together, then your marks are going to be on the good side. All right, now we're going to use that tracing wheel that I showed you and we're going to use a nice clear ruler. Now if you can see, I'll come in closer, the dart isn't totally straight. There's a little bit of a curve because I have the line is right here and you can see it curves out and then it goes back in. But we're going to trace it the best we can. And when you use this tracing wheel and when you want to go through both layers, you have to really give a lot of pressure to make sure that the second layer underneath is getting the marks transferred from the uh, tracing paper. Then roll the wheel all the way up to your vanishing point and if you'd like to make a little cross mark here you can because now you know your vanishing point. Make sure you rub it hard 
and then we'll do the other side of the dart. Okay, and we're coming down towards the bottom. Oh, great. So now let me take out the tracing paper and here we are. The marks have been transferred. For me, it's, it's on the wrong side. Okay, last but not least, this is going to be the chalk method of marking your pattern. And there's different kinds of chalks that you can buy. This is a tailor's chalk. This one here is a little system where it's got chalk in a container and there's a wheel on the bottom and you roll it. And then there's the old fashioned piece of school chalkboard chalk. Okay, I'm going to be using the chalk from the chalkboard today. So to mark the dart, you're going to put pins into the dart line, into your little circles, your little marks. Okay, and then we're going to turn it over and you're just going to come right to where the pin is and make a mark. And I'll come in a little bit closer. And this is, a, I guess, a, probably the quickest method, but it's the most, it's the least permanent method. It's a method you can use if you know that you're going to sew them right now, okay? Otherwise, I don't recommend this because the chalk disappears. Plus, you can't use the chalk method on all fabric. Sheer fabrics doesn't always work on prints. Lots of wools, if they're too fluffy, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see it. All right, so there's your chalk method on one side. Now, we're gonna turn it back over. I'm going to remove the pattern. All right, and here's the marks. So, let's Come a little closer. Let's put the pins into the chalk mark on this side. I think you get the hang of that. And you would do it for all of your marks. Okay, there's the dart. It's all, hang on, I'm sorry, it's out of focus. It's all pinned. And then you would just reverse it. And the same thing, mark your pins with your chalk. And then you have two pieces with your um, darts mark for your right and left side. But you got to sew them right now because that chalk will not be there later. Mm -hmm.